The next one is what not to say to plus size people or how they should how should they be approached? Um, oh my god, no, I think we should say one one thing that you would never say to a plus size girl. You're so brave. That's so flattering on you. Mm. The fuck does that mean? I don't think anybody is saying that. I genuinely don't think anybody's approaching people out in the open, by the way. that's uh, Since COVID, people have been very antisocial. Even before that, people have been incredibly antisocial. Most people nowadays don't even have IRL friends, or if they do, they haven't seen them in literal years. And whenever they do talk to them, it's either on the phone or on, like, a Discord call. So, like, when I hear people go... Maybe you guys are living different different experiences to me, but, like, nobody ever approaches me with the exception of maybe that random homeless person. Or uh, I remember probably, like, a few months ago, uh, a prostitute approached me when I was waiting outside for somebody outside of the McDonald's. Um, she approached me and she said, do I have a cigarette? And I said, no, because I don't smoke. And then she said, oh, okay, well, you look real sexy. What you want to do late tonight? And I was like, nothing. Uh, what do you, like, I guess play Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then she was like, mm, well, you know where I be at. You know where I be. And then I don't. I have no idea where you be. Where are your teeth? You don't have any teeth at all. I have no. Why do you look like? But that happens, right? I don't get approached by anybody, which is fine with me. I don't care, right? But maybe you guys are living a different life where people are coming up to you and saying that you're brave for wearing a crop top or, uh, I don't know, like skinny jeans. Like, where is this happening ever? I would love to know an exact sc scenario where this happened or if they, if they have, like, did you ever document it? Because I feel like you have to document stuff like that nowadays where people are even coming up to you in general. But maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can let me know down below. But I, I don't think so. Like, for me personally, since COVID, absolutely. Nobody even – people nowadays are so incredibly antisocial. I'm trying to think of what I, what's been said to me that, like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's how you know. Like, nobody's approaching you, dude. That's how you know. You, you have to actually think about it. And then you can't even come up with a scenario. Again, like, I've only ever been approached by either homeless people or, like, grandmothers sometimes when you're at the grocery store and they need help with something and they'll randomly approach you. Oh, honey, do you know where the wheat thins are? My grandson loves the wheat thins. I don't know why I always make grandmothers British. That's what I think of when I think of a grandmother. It's like that particular way of speaking. I know that their grandmothers speak in other vocal patterns and dialects, but whenever I think of a grandmother, that's what I think of is like, oh, baby, come here and get grandmother's peach cobbler. That's what I think about. Um, I could be wrong, though. Maybe you guys are having different, different scenarios or whatever, but... I no, people don't approach people. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty admin on that. I'm trying to think of what I, what's been said to me that like I'm like oh, <laughs> um, oh I just don't like when anyone assumes like the way people just say. You just need to go out and like walk more or whatever. Because Who's saying that, dude? Where is this happening? Like, can you imagine literally being outside and walking and somebody going, "Hey, you need to walk more." What am I doing, dude? What are you talking about, man? I, I'm literally doing that right now. Or maybe she's talking about, like, friends and family or something, maybe? Like, you, you go to a family gathering or, like, a cookout or something like that, and they go, Oh, you know, Jessica, I really think that maybe it would be optimal for you if you took more walks. Probably right, by the way. I mean, maybe those family members are good people deep down, dude, uh, because most of them don't want to see you die. I know a lot of these people like to think that most people have malicious intent behind whatever they're saying. Most of the time they don't, most, especially if they're like friends and family. Most of the time they just want to see you succeed and they know better. So they're probably just trying to enlighten you. Maybe you're just not missing something. Because like a lot of people, right, when they see a really, really fat person, they think, how the hell did this person make it 30, almost 40 years of their life? And they didn't realize that they could just literally eat, eat less and walk more and they'll lose weight, right? This person must never have known that. That's why most people will tell you the same information because it's such an anomaly that somebody will walk around uh, knowingly being fat and know that there are solutions to being fat, but you still do nothing about it. You understand? Like, that's why people say the same information to you over and over again. But I don't think many people are coming up to you on the street and saying you need to walk more. Maybe, like, they're driving by you or whatever, and they look up, oh, my God, and they, like, try to roll up the window right before they roll up the window. Like, hold it. Actually, hey, hey, I think instead of driving in this, in this Prius that you got, walk. Right, maybe they're doing that. I don't know, but uh, usually people are pretty antisocial. Like I said, it's a really simplistic answer. Eat less, run more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is the yeah, that's it's true. That is true. That is literally the what you're supposed to do when it comes to losing weight. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Oh, don't 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 go up to people and say that. I got it. More or whatever. Because a really simplistic answer. Eat less, run more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do that. Don't don't. A moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hip. Yeah, like let's not assume a that like. <laughs> 
anyone hasn't tried that stuff. But also let's let's be aware that that's not actually an answer that works. When somebody says try, I often wonder what they mean by try. If you've made it, I think these people are probably like 35, I think, probably. I don't know. I'm always like, it's always an anomaly when these people say their ages because I always think that they're way older than they actually are. But I guess I'm just wrong most of the time. But if somebody says they tried to lose weight, what do you mean by that? Like when you tried to work out and diet, uh, did you try for a long period of time or was it so like, was it more so like you did it for a week, you decided it wasn't for you or you didn't see the gains that you was expecting to get. So you just decided to not do it ever again because you decided that that was like, oh, it's just infeasible for me. I'm not losing enough weight and too quickly or whatever. Maybe you gained more weight because maybe you sucking down more water or maybe you took creatine or something like that. I don't know. Um, most of the time when it comes to weight loss and you're talking about diet and exercise or like more particularly eating less and walking more, it's all about consistency. You can't, you're not a... I don't know why these people would expect to see gains or like to see any type of progress after one or two weeks, dude. This is a long-term effort, okay? Did it take you three months to put on that weight? No, it probably took you years to put on that weight. Most of the time when people are gaining weight, it, you start off at like 18, you weigh like 180 pounds. And by the time you're 25, you're maybe like, 230 pounds and by the time you're 30 you're maybe 300 pounds like there, there you slowly incrementally gain more weight as time goes on maybe because you're working in jobs that don't have you walking around or doing physical activities or maybe you go home or you're driving home so you have less opportunity to move your body and maybe it's more convenient for you to pull up to the to the drive through or maybe it's off maybe it's better to go on uber eats and file into that 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 prescription of just getting the uber eats delivered to you it might be that slow and steady right nobody's gaining weight nobody's gaining like 200 pounds in a year so when i see these people say like i tried it for what for like a week two weeks a month like can you can you go longer than that it's about the consistency of it you can't just expect to see the gains after a week or two weeks sure people um that's not a well it, it, okay hold on now it does work for most people i would say it works for about 99 percent of people with the exception of the people that it doesn't work for of course there are going to be exceptions to the rule but for most people diet and exercise will work I, I there's nothing else i can say about that dude why would you assume it's not going to work for you that's what are you special what are you from like a different universe where like i don't know thermal dynamics doesn't apply to you if you eat less do you think your body's just going to maintain weight no that's not how that works at all if you eat less than what you need or you work out more than what your calories are then you will indeed lose weight that's just what it would the, the only difference is you're not doing it for a long enough span and you're not eating less enough in order to remedy that situation. You're probably still eating too much. I don't know. I see a lot of people drinking away their calories. Are you drinking away your Are you drinking sodas? Are you drinking anything with high calories? It could be that. I don't know, dude. I, I don't know this person's diet. But when these people say there's no guarantee that's going to work, uh, maybe for like a week. If you don't do it, if you do it for like a week, it, there's no guarantee it was going to work. But if you do it for a long period of time, yeah, it will work. You're just not doing it correctly. Let's be aware that that's not actually an answer that works for people. Um, let's not assume that you're the first person in the world that has ever told us to lose weight, that has ever told us to eat less, run more, that has ever told us that we're going to die, that has ever told us that we need to do this or do that or do this or do that so that we fit into your narrow-minded fucking bullshit if you live in this world and you are working under the belief that diet and exercise is a real thing and it could work for you and it has worked for very many people and it is the be all end all given the fact that we live in a universe where thermal dynamics is something that is in place right you cannot just create energy from nothing so with that in mind and you are still fat and you still want to exist like this it's fine you can be fat you can be overweight you can be voluptuous you can be bleg if you want to but as long as you understand that are, there are defects to this, as long as you understand that there are problems to do with this, um, that's fine. But you can't expect other people to look upon you, especially people that are like around you, like your friends and family, and not expect them to be concerned that you're making these decisions. It'd be like the equivalent of knowing somebody or somebody that's in your friends and family list that is chronically addicted to drugs or chronically addicting to, to gambling. And then you keep telling them like, hey, bro, you're having all these money problems. You're having all these problems with like losing your teeth. You know, your kids are being taken away. You're, you're about to foreclose on your house and this and that. And it's because you have all this debt. You have all this money that's going towards this drug addiction or this gambling addiction or whatever, right? They probably know that. They probably do. They are probably self-aware about that. But it, it serves no purpose to not do anything about it in general. It might just be better to cut those people out of your life in general or tell them what's going on, right? At least if you vocalize it, you feel – at least you, if you vocalize it, you feel better knowing that you tried, right? 
in those scenarios it might just be better to cut those people out completely like in these in these scenarios it might be a little bit lax right because if you do heroin or drugs or anything like that the effects of those things are usually more instantaneous like you're seeing them more for, you're seeing them very very visually um and the same thing for gambling right especially if somebody's like a chronic gambler somebody that's like spending all their money every single time they get a paycheck you're seeing that right away you're seeing all their issues right away whereas somebody being fat you're not really seeing it right away you're seeing it as a slow burning candle if that makes any sense right but as the years go on it becomes more and more jarring to see that person slowly but surely become more and more disabled and slowly lose more and more access to what their body used to be able to do in a more drastic way than just the regular effects of aging so it might just be better to cut these people out completely. I mean, these people are basically telling you like, hey, I know that you can die and exercise, but it doesn't work for me, which is bullshit, by the way. And Don't tell me. Stop telling me, which is ridiculous, by the way, because like it's like when you do a live stream, right? Sometimes when you do a live stream, people will come into that live stream and they'll go, hey, what is your name? Hey, what are you doing tonight? Hey, what? Are you, how old are you? People are going to ask the same questions because these are new people that are coming in periodically, right? And of course, you've already answered that question. 20, 30 times in that live stream, right? But that doesn't matter because this new person wasn't there when you answered a question before. So when they come in and you're asking that question, you shouldn't be getting mad at that new person coming in because they're asking that same question. No, just answer the question. It is what it is, right? Or at least give them the benefit of the doubt in the same way that if you're living with other people and they're asking you and they're new people, right? They're asking you and they're going, hey, uh, have you ever thought about diet and exercise? I wouldn't think that it's malicious. It's probably more so these are new people that probably don't know. They're, they're, they're ignorant. They don't know that. So instead of sitting there going, don't ask me this. I know people have asked me a lot. I understand what you're saying. It's probably very annoying, but it, it, it's just something you're going to have to deal with regardless. It's how life is, right? It's just it, That's just what it is. Let's just stop assuming. How about that? And well, I don't know what you mean by assuming. Uh, if you have died and exercises, if you have died and exercised and it didn't work for you, you just weren't consistent enough to have that be applied in a long term spectrum. So I'm not assuming anything. Diet and exercise will work for about 99% of people. It, it, it literally is the definitive way to lose weight. So if you're not doing that, then fine. But what do you mean? Stop assuming. I'm not assuming anything. I know that we fit into your narrow-minded fucking bullshit. It's not my narrow-minded bullshit, by the way. Um, the world has stairs. I don't know if you know what those are. Do you know what that is? Those things that are big rectangles uh, that are on the floor that go up periodically and you have to use your knees. And when your knees start shaking and you start breathing like you're Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle when you reach halfway up, that's not a good thing, okay? That's not a, that's not a, that's not an indication of somebody that's healthy. And I got to let you know right now that the weight is most definitely being the thing that's going to negatively affect you the most on that. Let's just stop assuming. How about that? And also never tell me that I have such a pretty face. I, I wouldn't. You're good. I would never have said that. Uh, you have a... Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm not going to say anything about that. You're not pretty. A pivotal point for me. Something around core beliefs about ourselves. And I, had a, I have a core belief that I am unworthy of this space I take up. And because of that core belief... I find things in my life that support that core belief. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. When you're a bigger person and you sit down on public transportation, you take up two seats and that grandmother at the front of the bus or the train is looking at you taking up that two seats and she's just sitting there like, oh, I wish you wouldn't take up two of those spots. I am so old and I can't sit down without you. Or maybe you got that Haitian grandmother looking at you. Hey, hey, get up out of that seat. You are too fat. You're taking too many seats. There's, there's plenty of times in your life I feel like, yeah, you would probably feel that way, right? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You are a bigger person. You are taking up more space than a normal, conventionally sized person would. It's crazy that we even have to have these references, these types of terminologies, but it's true. Yeah, I mean, I can see that 100%. This is an obvious take. Find things in my life that support that core belief. Like when you buy a chair and you sit down in that chair and you realize that your hips are too big for the chair, even though it says it's big size, man, that's got to be a wake-up call, right? No, it's not. These people don't have wake-up calls. Or the times you have to call up restaurants to ensure that they have uh, appropriate seats that can accompany somebody of a larger size or like a weight capacity, um, which these people do have to do, by the way. They do they do indeed have to call up these establishments and ask them that stuff. Or uh, when they purchase furniture, they have to find out what the weight capacity is on that. And all of this stuff, or, you know, for instance, I've seen many of these people when they buckle into their car they just can't anymore because the seat the seat belt doesn't go forward anymore and they can't buckle in so what do they do instead of losing weight they buy something that's going to 
uh, the seatbelt extender to to buckle back in. A lot of this stuff should be wake up calls, and that's what she's referring to. I think is like she she's noticing that the world is not made for her. The world is not accompanied for her. And instead of connecting the dots, which would be two plus two equals, I gotta lose weight because this is an issue now. I'm starting to actually see some major, major, major complications due to my weight. Instead of seeing that, she's then instead going, I'm gonna vent about this on my fat acceptance podcast and tell my people that I'm feeling this type of way about it, which is fine, vent about it. But what about losing weight? Like you do realize that shit can all just be alleviated if you just lost the weight, right? things in my life that support that core belief and they are the loudest i know i'm sorry we don't have to talk (laughs) even more about it but what is she crying is that woman crying why are you crying i'm sorry that she can't buckle herself in the seat belt i'm sorry that her knees be crickling and crackling when she going up the stairs i uh, what am i why are you crying though what the loudest i know i'm sorry we don't have to talk (laughs) even more about it but what I did find interesting was I, I often was getting frustrated with myself being like, there's so many people telling me I'm doing the right thing. And there's one person who's really important to me, who's not telling me that I'm doing the right thing. And it is fucking everything up. If you have people in your life and they are enabling you in order to stay in your obese body and you are literally day by day noticing that you have inadequacies, through your traversal of that every day, and you somehow think that that is a good thing, that's not a good thing. You have literally put yourself in a vacuum chamber of people that will just yes queen you into oblivion, and that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing, dude. You're literally noticing the problems, right? So what do you mean by that one person? Are you that one person? Like, you're that one person that you're seeing all these problems, and you're going, everybody is telling me this, but I still feel that. Yeah, you know why? Because it's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's your inner, like, fucking subconscious telling you that you have some issues and you're not doing anything about it and you're suffering day by day and other people around you are just yes-queening you, like the people on this podcast cast right here, I guess. Telling me that I'm doing the right thing and it is fucking everything I don't, up. I think they're actually crying. Well, then I looked at my core belief and it was because, <sighs> oh, because they're supporting what I actually believe about myself. It's tangible. Sometimes these people will say the most crazy shit and I'll just look at them like you do realize you're actually telling me you have some real world problems because of your weight, but you have somehow managed to convince yourself, brainwash yourself into believing that it's not an issue because you're around people that tell you it's not an issue. And I understand that when you're in communities like that, uh, they, they do have a tendency of telling you hogwash and it seems like she's just a victim of her own environment that it seems like that and she's not going to do anything about it because the community is telling her otherwise even though she's actively telling you that she has these problems it's crazy and it was because she's literally brainwashed herself oh and she's telling you about it openly too and she doesn't like this is a crazy ass statement but she's still not doing anything about it they're supporting what i actually believe about myself it's tangible it's doable and someone just has to fucking do it and you fucking did it and that is so badass what are you wearing right now dude Damn, I didn't know high-waisted were supposed to come up to your fucking chest, bro. Good lord, man. I'm high-waisted jeans is coming up high, bro. And as you said, in that body, right? And yeah. so, like, I love that. In that body. Barbara Butch said that about working in the, uh, doing the Olympics DJing is I did, I DJed at the Olympics in this body, and that has become a little anthem for me. I, I teach in this body. I do a podcast in this body. I date somebody in this body. All I of that I piss off stuff. mediocre men on the internet in this in body. This and body. I love that for me. <laughs> Trigger warning. The copium is hard here, dude. The copium is real hard. I'm happy that you're living your life in your body and you're enjoying your life in your body. I don't have a problem with that at all, actually. The, the issue a lot, the issue arises when you have people literally on your podcast saying that they have issues with their body while you're proclaiming that you've done a lot with your body. I'm not doubting that you have, but you don't realize that there are issues, like actual problems that you're talking about, openly talking about, but you're you're instead attributing those things Instead of looking inward and seeing that there are things that you can do in order to change those things, instead you're going, this is okay. It's fine. We live in a fat phobic world. We live in a fat phobic society. Things are the way they are because society doesn't like us or whatever the fuck. No, no, you are a weak minded individual. That's an easy out for you. That's too easy for you to admit that the world is the problem instead of looking inward and finding out that maybe it's you or something that you can do about it. That's a weak person's ideology. You're a 
You're literally demonizing yourself on a daily basis while trying to convince yourself there's nothing wrong with you. One, nothing wrong with me. It's like, it's just dumb, dude. Uh, we're fat girls. We eat what we want, when we want to. We're fat girls. Of course we're gonna ask for a table instead of a booth. I thought that this was supposed to be like an exaggeration of the truth, not actual truth, dude. This seems like all this stuff is accurate. You eat whenever you want to. I know you eat whenever you want to. I can see that shit. I know you eat whenever, whatever you want to, whenever you want to. I know that. Or I know you guys can't fit in boots either if you guys didn't know. I guess if you're a very big, big, big bloated individual, um, the disrespect that the table or the booth will do to your body is a little bit too much. Kind of like sitting on a chair with armrests and you can't put them up. It, it's That's also disrespectful for a lot of these people, which kind of makes a little bit of sense because think about this, right? For me, I need the armrests because I don't have a big body that I can lay my arms on. But if I was a bigger bellied individual, I could just take my hands and just lay them on my stomach and just have that be my armrest. So it's kind of redundant to have a chair with armrests when you already have your armrests as your body. But I got to let you know something. That's not a feature of your body. You do understand that. Like when you're sitting down and you could just have your hands laying on your stomach like that, that's not good. That's not a good thing. I know that you're probably looking at that as like a benefit or something like that. It's not. It's not, dude. Um, thank God you live in a society where that's even something that you can navigate through the world like. Because, like, if you were in any other scenario and you just had the ability to put your arms on your belly as an armrest, you would just never, that would never have to be a thing. Like, you do realize that? I don't know, man. Whatever, bro. Whatever, man. We're fat girls. Of course we're going to ask for a table instead of a booth. We're fat girls. Of course I ordered enough to have leftovers. That's more than enough to have leftovers, bro. This woman is dying, bro. I, that's just tough, bro. You know, the other day, I was at this establishment, and I saw this little, I don't know how old this kid was, maybe four or five years old or whatever, and this kid was old a fuck beast, and he was running through this the, the waiting area, because I was in a waiting area, and this kid was out of breath, bro. Every five seconds, he would just be out of breath. He was eating some fucking Oreos or some shit like that. Parents obviously didn't give a fuck about him. It was terrible, dude, and I understand that when you're a parent, uh, is, is difficult, right? It's very difficult, obviously, to raise somebody, to take care of somebody. You're going to slack off naturally. But damn, bro, it's tough when I see people of that age that are going to grow up in a very, very, what's the word I'm looking for, dude? A deteriorated body. And I see a lot of people that carry that body size through the rest of their life. And I get that it's easier to just not look at the problem, even though you're literally having problems like this every single day. You're having problems with dating. You're having problems with chairs. You're having problems with boots. You're having problems with size. Like, these things are going to add up. So, like, I don't understand how these people can just go through their lives and never actually address the problems. And for me personally, whenever I have issues, I immediately go to the doctor. I used to not do that when I was, like, younger. I used to just like tough it out or whatever because that's what men are supposed to do. But then I embraced my femininity. It sucks to even say that shit. But I embraced my femininity and I went to the doctor. A lot of dudes will just tough it out. It's actually really crazy. Like when I found out that men have an increased risk of dying of, of prostate cancer compared to women dying of um, – what's that pink one that we celebrate every November? Whatever that is. Uterus cancer? I don't know. Egg sac cancer. Um, it's not. We just die at an increased rate because men don't go to the hospital as much as women do. And that's terrible. That's really, really bad, dude. Go to the doctor. If you have issues, actually approach the doctor, especially if you got medical insurance or whatever. I know so many dudes that will just like do anything and everything to not go to the hospital because they think it's weak or they think they're gay for going to the doctor. It's not gay to check up on your shit, dude. It's not gay to have a blood test done on you or whatever, dude. It's, it's a very masculine, if anything. It's very masculine. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with embracing femininity. It's okay to not be a brick. We're fat girls. Of course I'm learning to honor my hunger cues. You be honoring that shit a little bit too much. If anything, you dishonoring that shit, dude. You real deal dishonoring that shit. It is a great dishonor to your family and your body size. We're fat girls. Of course we save some for later. We're fat girls. Of course we take up space. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, shit. We're fat girls. Of you know what I don't like when they do these little, like, why can't you just be walking beforehand and then start recording as you're walking and then give like a little sign so that way you can start talking but you're already walking instead of just having the shot be, you know what I'm saying? Okay, go. And then you start walking. You know what I'm talking about? You know they make fun of millennials when they record themselves and then they have like that, it's called the millennial, um, the, the millennial look or something like that where after you're done recording, you have to look for the stop button and you don't edit it out. Why don't you just 
walk through and then edit out that first like one or two seconds. Okay, whatever. Of course we're unlearning generational fat phobia. What is generational fat phobia? When your grandmother tells you to stop eating so much so she can have grandchildren before she dies? Like, what is generational fat phobia, bro? Like stairs? Like, what is that? Uh, sidewalks? What is it? Please let me know what generational fat phobia is, bro. We're fat girls. We're worthy really exactly as we are. Well, oh, calm down with that. Yo, bro. <laughs> what the fuck even was that? Why? Why'd you, why'd you slap it, though? What was even the per? You know, all right. All right that's, uh, yeah, I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about. Go back real quick. Generational fat phobia. We're fat girls. We're worthy really exactly as we are. That's fine that you could say that you're worthy exactly the way you are, but if you're not getting what you want and you're not seeing any change in that, you're fine. You could say that you're worthy, but that doesn't really imply to anything, huh? Like, you, I could say a whole bunch of things. I'm black! I'm black! Look, see, I'm black. Am I black? No, I'm not black. You know why? Because just because I say something doesn't mean it's true. In the same way that you saying I am worthy doesn't mean that you are actually worthy. And I would love to know what you even mean by worthy. Like, are you just going to start lifting Mjolnir? Like, what do you mean by that? We're told every Tuesday we're going to die by 40. So, like, <sighs> damn. We got you know, five years. We got, we, yeah, I got four. I'm already at the 36 mark. So, I TikTok. got 10. Okay, <laughs> not you, baby. All right. Yeah, just, just, just dangle those years right in front of me. And does that not bother you, dude? Because you guys, okay, it may not be 40. You might make it. A lo you might make it longer than that, but a lot of these people will sit there and go, I'm obviously not going to die by 40, dude. That's crazy. Okay, fine. You may not die by 40. You may not die by 50. You may not even die by 60. You might live a long life, okay? Let's say hypothetically you live a long life. Do you not think that you're going to have issues while you go through that time period? Of course, like the natural effects of aging, your body becomes progressively ass and you get in like those little DLC packs of inadequacies, right? Maybe you can't do the things that you no longer were able to do in your 20s. I know I've started to see those things. I can't crack this thumb anymore and that sucks a lot of dick. But um, as you get older, things start getting harder and harder and harder. And especially if you're fatter, those things are going to be expedited by a large margin. I wouldn't be surprised that these people are dealing with problems that they wouldn't have to deal with until they were like 50. But they're dealing with them at 36 or 35 or whatever, 30, whatever, however old that other woman was. So I understand what you're saying. Like you, you can like shrug it off like, ah, we're not going to die. Stop it. Sure, you might not die, but you might have to deal with a lot. You're, you're going to deal with a lot of issues. Let's be honest here for a second. You're going to deal with a ton of issues, a lot of problems, and you guys are just shrugging it off like we're not going to die. I guess. Sure, bro. I hope I hope for your benefit you don't have to deal with those things, but I know you are going to deal with those things just because that's how shit works when you're this size. <laughs> I remember one day I was waiting at the bus stop and I heard church bells chiming, and I was like, oh, this will be nice. I'm going to go into Manhattan. And someone just threw a bag of McDonald's at my face. Damn. Um, was it, like, still edible, or was it, like, empty or whatever? What do you mean somebody threw a bag of McDonald's at you, bro? That don't even sound that bad. What? Dudes, dudes doing drive-bys with, with Mickey D's? Yo, where you at, bro? Let me find out where you at, bro. I'll be upset at first. But then I look in the back, oh, yeah, blessing. A couple mixed chickens, a large fry. Oh, man, dude, I'm doing well today. I would not be upset after I looked in the back. I might be having some exchanges of those words. Thank you. But uh, what is the implication here? Is, like, some dudes drove by? Was it at least, I, I don't know, bro. Whatever, dude. If it was food and it was good to eat, it, 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 was it they were just fat phobic because they threw McDonald's at you? I don't I don't know. I, I'm not. Okay, whatever. We'll hear them out. But that, that don't sound too bad so far. I mean, granted, they did assault you. But I might be like, yo, thanks, bro. Appreciate the Mickey D. Oh, this will be nice. I'm going to go into Manhattan. And someone just threw a bag of McDonald's at my face. I'm also questioning that, too. I don't think that actually happened. Like, was, there's, like, things like that. Had okay, that what, what, was it full, though? Like, what was in the bag? Did you not look in the bag at all? Like, did you not see what was inside? Did you not? It seemed, bro, like, are you just going to? you know gloss past that like somebody threw a bag of mcdonald's in your face and you didn't look in the bag at all you didn't see what was going on in that shit or was it empty or was it just a, an empty bag of mcdonald's like what was it you know what i'm saying like i would love to know i would love to know if this seems like an unrealistic story and i feel like a little bit of detail uh, would go a long way here instead of just going they threw a bag of mcdonald's in my face what was in the bag and someone just threw a bag of mcdonald's at my face okay like there's like things like that that have happened in my life just from being like a fat man like from being a fat man uh okay um i mean i've had experiences of 
dudes trying to solicit homosexual acts from me. I, I remember one time I was on the bus and some dude was asking me if he ever thought, if I ever thought about having sex with gay men. And I told him no. And he asked me why, which is crazy as hell. Like, what do you mean? Why? First of all, if I say I've never thought about it, what do you mean? Like, you never thought about it? Not even once? Are you sure? What do you mean am I sure? What are, you, what, are you, what are you trying to imply there with that question? Like, are you questioning my questionability of being gay? No, I've never thought about that shit, bro. I'm not a gay gentleman. I'm not a homosexual individual, which is fine, by the way. If you want to be gay and you want to indulge in the male genitalia, you can do that. I'm good. I'm not trying to fulfill any man's desire, unless the price was right. But in that particular scenario, you're not gay for doing it for a, a little bit of money or something like that. It's, you're doing it for the other intent. But if you're doing it for the strict purpose of fulfilling another man's desires... That might be gay, depending on the scenario, of course. But uh, this sounds like an unrealistic scenario. So, what, like, what exactly was happening? Like, they, these dudes was drawing. So, this is some boys in the hood shit, except instead of using Uzis, they was throwing McChickens at you? Like, what the fuck, bro? These dudes were outside the sunroof tossing bags of Mickey D's at people? Blessing people, it sounds like, dude. I mean, do you know how much Mickey D's cost nowadays, dude? One McChicken is three bills. So, I mean, I don't know, dude. I would love to know what was in the bag. That's all I'm asking. Like, there's, like, things like that that have happened in my life just from being, like, a fat man. That's like, a lie. One time I was walking with a bag of Taco Bell home and someone, um, like, pulled one of those pranks where they pulled up next to me and screamed fat ass. Like okay, look, dude. How fat are you? How, 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 I gotta know how fat, how fat you are, bro. These just sound like very unrealistic things that have happened, bro. I, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about because I've never been pulled up to randomly pulled up by next to somebody and somebody say fat ass. I've never had that happen ever in my entire life. I've been around fat people. I've been around a lot of fat people and I've walked with them and never had that ever happen, bro. Most people are minding their own business. Most people are enjoying their own lives. Everybody else got so many things going on in their lives. Why the fuck would they bother putting you down randomly? Uh, these scenarios just sound a little bit infeasible they don't sound like things that have actually happened bro this this sounds like a crazy ass store you were walking down the street with taco bell what's even a per first of all why does it even matter that you have the taco bell is it, it, it I, I feel like if dudes was gonna pull up to you and just be like yo you're fat i don't think the taco bell even matters but all right you had the taco bell and they pulled up and they said you was big as fuck and then what they skirted off what what, what? <laughs> Okay. And that McDonald's things happened too. All right, dude. Um <laughs> when someone um like pulled one of those pranks where they pulled up next What do you mean one of those pranks? Like what do you talk about? That's not even a prank. That's just verbal assault, bro. That's not even a prank. I mean screamed fat ass. Like these are like pranks that have happened recently in my life that is just like What do you mean recently? Like what? Today? Like what do you mean recently, bro? Um I don't think other people experience that and it's normal. Yeah, no sh No shit nobody's experiencing that, bro. That doesn't happen. Where do you live where this is transpiring, bro? What the fuck? You walking down the street randomly and dudes is tossing Mickey D's at your head? And, and, and dudes is pulling up drive-by and assaulting you with verbal assaults, bro? I, this doesn't happen. This is unbelievable. I can't even believe this happened to you. This is so... This is so unbelievable. Like, if you told me a st the story of Narnia, I would be more... I would believe that more than I would believe this story. This sounds like a crazy event that just transpired right now. I think you're making that up. I think you're lying. I think this is an elaborate illusion. I'm calling you out. I do not think that something that actually happened. I think you just made this up on the spot to make it seem like you're living a worse life than you actually are. It's okay. We all get it, dude. We all want to exaggerate it. We all want to be victims in today's world. You may not be experiencing any of this shit, but you want to make sure that people know that you're experiencing something. I get it, bro. But the lying like this? Normally when I'm alone, but like... It's interesting that it's oh I see why now it's happening when you're when it's when you're alone because if somebody else was there it would never happen obviously because then they would have to validify it right you by yourself though you could just you could just say shit experience that and it's normally when I'm alone but like it's interesting that it's like they know they could bully me when I'm by myself who are these people who what do you mean it really is so powerful um, and and I think. Is nobody going to call this guy out? Like, are, is nobody going to be like, wait a minute, hold on. Did you look, is nobody going to ask him what was in the bag? That would be my first question. What was in the bag? Uh, I, I, you know, is nobody going to ask him that? Like, he just went on that whole rant about getting tossed in the face with Mickey D's and nobody's going to ask him that. And nobody's going to call him out on the validity of that story. Nobody's going to be like, oh, can you tell me about when that happened? Can you tell me about, like, what the guys look like? What kind of car they were driving? I don't fucking know. I, 
anything, literally anything will be better than just passing that by as if that guy didn't say a whole bunch of hogwash, bro. This dude literally just came on this podcast and told you with a straight face. This has this happened recently. By the way, if somebody says this happened recently, I'm thinking about in the last year at the bare minimum. Dude's pulling up, drive by and throwing Mickey D's bags at your head and nobody questioning that shit. Where do we live? What is this transpiring, bro? Please let me know. So much of the fat experience is intertwined in diet culture and the messaging to shrink yourself and take a blessed space. And I also didn't know I was allowed to not diet. You, well, you don't have to diet, of course, but you are going to die. Like, I think that's like what the message is. Like, if you're fat, you just need to be on a diet so you're not fat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could live as a fat person, but it'd be like living as a crackhead when you don't have to live as a crackhead. Like, I, I get it. Crack is good for your mouth, and it probably fulfills a lot of desires. It probably makes you feel delicioso and stuff like that. Kind of like a, a pigeon when it eats bread. You know what I'm talking about? You ever see pigeons eating bread? They love it, dude. Pigeons love eating bread, man. You toss you you toss bread on the floor, and they just fly to it, man. They love it, dude. Or, like, I guess any bird in general loves it. Seagulls are a little bit too aggressive, though. I've had it too too many times uh, when you go to the beach, even sometimes when you don't even go to the beach. Where I live, you'll have a couple seagulls, and they bully the pigeons, which is excusable, bro. A lot of these pigeons are kind of assholes, bro, and they got a lot of balls, bro. They'll come up to you, right up to you, bro, and they'll just start talking shit. And I'm not feeding you, bro. I'm not doing that shit at all. Or squirrels, too, sometimes. They'll come up to you. I know a dude actually downtown Boston there's a few guys down there that let squirrels just live on them they'll just be sitting down on the benches and shit and squirrels be crawling on them they don't do anything about it real weird bro I don't know like where do you even have that like where do you write down that ta that talent like when you apply to a job you just put down have had squirrels approach me and also sleep on my chest it's a talent like where do you write that down and like have that be a thing but, uh, yeah, bro, pigeons suck, too. I don't like pigeons at all. A lot of them don't have legs. They just kind of exist without legs. I don't know what the fuck they're doing sometimes, dude. They just kind of chill in places. And I just wonder, like, what, what, what does your life look like, right? But you can't ask them because they can't talk. Well, at least they don't talk in the same way that you talk. So it's kind of difficult to communicate with these guys. But uh, pigeons are terrible, bro. I don't like them at all. But definitely um, seagulls are the worst, bro. They be bullying, dude. Uh, I remember one time I was on the beach. And there was a child. A little black child and he was on the um the sand and he was eating like a burger he had just got him from like the little stand or whatever and he had put it down a seagull walked up to that shit and just swallowed that shit and that kid was crying dude and he went to his mom and i was just thinking like what do you even do as that mom like you can't you know what i'm talking about your kid expects you to beat up the seagull but you can't beat up the seagull because that shit flied away and you don't even know which one is which anymore which is kind of racist right you're looking at all the seagulls in the same color come on they're different right but i don't know what you do in that scenario i guess you just kind of forgive it buy him another burger exactly. but i wouldn't want to buy the burgers so most of those burgers on the beaches would be like nine dollars a burger bro suck me off. i'm not paying nine dollars a burger this yeah. thing as fat was it never it never was an option i'm glad that you've opened your eyes to existing as a fat person but now you've literally opened your eyes to like an inevitable life of inadequacies and terribleness mm -hmm. so i i just think anything that continues to do that work and spread that message wouldn't you just literally saying that you were having insecurities about being fat and that it was not good for you and you were feeling some type of way like negative about it okay which is just so badass i see you wanting to say something i do yeah. and we can totally cut this but yeah i only if you're comfortable i'm genuinely trying to figure out how it is how it affected you when you were working there and i feel like a lot of your defense mechanisms are coming up the laughing the okay. smiling the, <laughs> and it's and it's okay like what we're talking about yeah. is really hard you lived it yeah. so like if you need to do that i i really understand yeah. was she calling her out right now what the fuck what the fuck bro hey we can cut this out but yo you're 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 kind of being a bitch right now you're kind of being a bitch because you had that experience. Remember that experience that you don't like to talk about and you don't like to tell anybody about, but the, I'm going to bring it up right now about how you went through that. Yeah, are, aren't you like, aren't you, aren't you a bitch because of that? That's what I'm basically hearing here. But like, you know, people are commenting about their bodies all the time around you yeah. and in an industry where you're trying to be successful and you're trying to stand out and you're trying to connect in. So I'm really just trying to, I don't know, connect with yeah. what it was actually. These people don't have conversations like real people. The, these are like some phantom conversations. These are like the, 
the exaggerations of what conversations should be like. I've never heard somebody communicate like this before. You don't have conversations like this. Like if you want to ask somebody about insecurities, you don't go, hey, let's talk about how you're insecure about this. Let's talk about all your bad behavioral techniques that you use to cope with the fact that you were living a lie. And what the fuck, bro? Who the fuck are you, first of all? Why are you saying this to me right now on a podcast? Jesus, you couldn't talk to me about this before the podcast? Why are you wearing a turtleneck and you don't got a neck, huh? That should be a question that we ask. We like. You know, well, thank you for calling me out. True, bro. What you doing, dude? That's supposed to be a BFF. What the hell are you wearing? Um, no, <laughs> you're right. I, I do. I very much. I use humor as a defense mechanism very often. Um, it was fucking traumatic. Um, I felt both completely invisible mm. and so exposed at the same time in very different ways. Oh. Oh, that landed. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of fat people can relate to that yeah. feeling. <laughs> okay. Just have a soundboard and just go, yeah. Just have the soundboard. Anytime you agree with something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who watches this shit besides us, obviously? Because we're watching it for the cringe. It's undelightful to my ears. It disrespects my soul, and I don't like it. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. <sighs> yes, I have a random mark right here. I think it's because I was like, I don't know, I was like cringing the other day and I made it, I was like, I was like screaming almost, um, internally. I was screaming internally and I think I stretched my skin on my face or something. I have no idea how that happened, but I used to get a lot of marks on my face when I used to lift really, really heavy. Not heavy for like normal people or whatever, but like heavy for me, obviously. Um, and I used to make really, really cringy faces, but I think that's the reason why. But anyway, um, I really appreciate you today watching today's video. If you watch today's video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in marker because I think I have a marker in front of me. I think this is a marker, right? It's a really good pen, man. I would have killed to have a pen like this in any grade of school because that's a really good pen, okay? But the problem with pens is that if you're not good, I'm terrible at writing. If you ever saw me write, it's the worst handwriting you've ever seen in your life, which I'm so happy that everybody nowadays just types everything out because I am a very bad writer. It, it, you probably won't even know how to like distinguish my handwriting, bro. It was awful. Um, and I'm also really bad at typing too. So like if you ever see me typing things, I'm always so slow because I'm bad at spelling. So whenever I do anything, I'm, I'm really good at articulating sentences. I'm really good at speech, but I'm not good at typing itself. So whenever I type anything, I always use I always use the voice to text commands because I'm not good at typing. That's my inadequacies of the day. Anyway, um, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. I think you're an amazing person, by the way. Um, I know you are far better at writing than me, and I love that about you. I love that you can write. It's a lost art. A lot of people don't want to write anymore. A lot of people don't have notebooks or at least notebooks that are physical. A lot of people just write down in the notepads and things such as so forth, but I love that you do. I love that you have a notebook, a handy-dandy notebook that you write into, and you tell, you tell the notebook about your feelings and all this other stuff, or if you don't do that, I like the way that you express yourself and the way that you do express yourself. That's beautiful. That's amazing. I think it's awesome that you can do that stuff because it's really important to um, find an outlet that you can use um, to express yourself in, and I think it's amazing. Any, anything, any of those things, unless it's like bad for you, of course. But anyway, we're gonna end the video here. If you wanna check out my socials, it'll be linked down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.